Hi guys, welcome to Let's Go Fishing. Another cold morning at the Vol Dam. Sean, what's the date? 13th. 13th. Luckily it's not Friday. Eh? Exactly. Thursday. <laughs> yeah, fishing with Sean Thomas, one of my pro anglers. And uh, he dragged me to Dryfontein. What's up? What are we going to catch? Hopefully a few big carp, low. Yeah. Um, they've been here the last couple of weeks. Tempo's a bit slow, but they, they're biting. Yeah. We, we, we had a good um, session at Moormans. Moormans is just that way. And um, it's been 15 years, Sean, since I've been here. Been a long time. Been a long time. But yeah, Sean, let's dive straight into it. Um, what, what are you throwing? Um, low on the bottom here, I've got a, a mental muddy float with a nice Wait. long low backing. Mental muddy float. <laughs> All right, did oh, you make it just a homemade, homemade one? Homemade okay, you're gonna, you're gonna tell us later how you do that. I'll do that. On the top hook here, I've got a dough that I pushed back into the ball that I've, I've rubbed on, I've rubbed with the aptiacus and ace. Okay. And then on the ball itself, I've got the mental muddy covered with a bit of lure of lake. Okay, good combo. Good, good, good combo. On, on the other rod? Uh, the just, other rod, yeah. Let's, let's walk around and see what Sean's got on the other rod. On the other rod here, I've got an F250 float with a nice long dough back into the ball. I've got a sweet white garlic float with a nice long dough back into the ball. And then I've got um, F250 and turbo garlic. So you leave nothing for me to fish with. <laughs> All right, Sean. Tell me about that. Okay. We're not going to put pressure on you. Get, get them in. I'm going to do mine. And then we're going to get fishing. Let's go fishing. I'm going to do my deep rod first. So my deep rod, I haven't measured out. I'm just going to throw it onto that 125 to 130 mark. Um, got an M1 on there, like a big signature series millibomb. Viskinder, I'll tell you now what's on the hooks. So just a little bit of Viskinder and I'm just going to wrap that onto the bomb, just like that. And then with that, I'm going to go a little bit subtle with Nesquik. So Nesquik is a lacquer soft strawberry. And this time of the year, these two combine really well. On my bottom hook, I have, I must just make sure now, a DKW float. That's our honey float. And um, on the top hook is a why not float, both oozing floats, the soft ones. Backed up with a small white dough, and I'm going to throw these just like that. Like I said, a little bit softer, with a little bit of garlic and a little bit of color. Let's see what we catch. My right hand rod is going in at 100 meters, and I'm putting some DKW on here. So DKW is that spicy honey. Like the old, old honey glow that you got. All right, and with that, a little bit of optiker's anise. Luckily, it hasn't frozen up, and I've put the atomizer on my aniseed, so be careful with this. I'm just going to, just a little bit, not too much. That's it, and then garlic oozing float, the pink garlic oozing float without a dough and then uh, the black magic oozing float without a dough that's my challenge for the day to catch a cop without dough on the back of a float so yeah i was challenged to do that so let's see if i can do it sure no that's a hello on with the fish on with the fish I lost my first one. I think I was a bit hasty. It's an amateur mistake. Mm -hmm. Amateur mistake. Schoolboy error. This is your long rod. This is my long rod, correct. Yeah, is this the one with the um, mental muddy float? No, no, this is the um, F250 float and the sweet white garlic float. Okay, yeah. I must say that F250 float served me well in summer for a couple of muddies. Um, caught some carp with it as well, but the, the bigger yellows love it as well. Um, uh, at Rivera, I caught a lot of a lot of nice sized yellows with it. It's, it's fast become one of my favourite floats. It's just that 
bubble gummish, winter greenish, sweet float, and it, it just works. What did you have on the on the bomb here? 50-50 and turbo garlic. Oh, you taking some notes of Frankie there? Frankie and Steven. Yes, Steven's not gonna be happy. <laughs> Stevie, let's fat your ass, puppy. How does this feel, Shona? Uh, it doesn't feel too big, though. Yeah. Last last um, episode we did was on Wilmans on the island, and they came in quickly. And just here in front, they started fighting. So hopefully, this one waits up as well. Let's go get it. I'll net for you, Shona. Ah, oh, nice. It's cold, Shona. They don't fight at all, eh? Beautiful fish. Boom, chaka, laka. Let's handle it here, Shona. Yo, nice fish. Like a man, oh man, what a fish. Not, not what I expected on that one. Yeah, it was. It the, the the bite and the fight doesn't fit the profile. Yeah. I love winter fishing. Eh? Yeah, lekker, lekker, lekker. That's that's a lekker thing about um, the Valdem in winter. Come, you can come a bit later. We only arrived after eight. Yeah. And first fish in the net, hour and ten minutes. I lost one already. So, don't put away your rods. Great, great yeah. plan. <laughs> yeah, let's go catch another one, Shona. Okay. say it's a slow 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 day it's a very very slow day I thought I lost this fish now um, there's a lot of fish turning quite close to us and it was wind still up until a couple of minutes ago in comparison to to the other day where we were fishing in the middle of a cold front but we'll work it out this is on the DKW can't even remember what I threw with the DKW DKW and the uh, optickers are nice um, lost the fish on the same combo and threw it back onto the same spot and it lays a bit but at least we've got a fish on the line now let's go net it Shona will you net for me? Sean is eating again Johan, Sean eat the yellow dog. Oh yes, that's what we want. Call it Voldem Gold. Oh man, I'll wait another hour for another one of these. Most definitely. Look at that. Chicka 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 chicka. Ooh, shoot him! Oh, it's out! The other hook, the other hook, the other hook, the other hook! The other hook. <laughs> Oh, shiv it, shiv it, shiv it, shiv it. <laughs> That's how you don't do it. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Like you <laughs> nervous moment. Yeah, eh? That was almost embarrassing. Yes. Well, just drop it a bit. That's a, a testimony to that extreme abrasion seven pound hook link. Eh? What happened here is the, the one hook hooked into the net and the fish was on the outside. <laughs> I can't wait. That's very I can't wait what your ink is gonna <laughs> tune you on that one. <laughs> uh, let's handle it, yeah. Yo 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 yo. Looky looky. Man oh man. I didn't check the float. Um I'll, when we bait up again I'll I'll tell you what was on there. It was on the it was on the bottom hook. 
So when we bait up, if you rewind the video, you'll see what was on the bottom hook. We're going to take a quick picture of this fish um, for an article. And after that, we'll put it back. Thanks, Shona. Thanks, for, thanks for the netting. <laughs> Thank you, fishy. Oh, let's get this hook back into the water. Pictures have been taken. Around about three and a half, four kgs. What? A pleasure. Let's catch another one. Can't really remember how I had these two floats around. I think the Bun Spice 101 float was on top. And remember I did that with it. And then the other one was the garlic oozing float. The pink one, the ladylike one. The one Shaw normally fishes with. <laughs> oh, your Anki, Shaw. Is it your Anki fishes with this one? Well, Maniki. All right. We'll introduce Maniki at some stage. All right. Just like that. I'm going to push it in like that. And then the DKW. W and a little bit of uptakers are nice. There we go, not too much. It's really strong stuff, so don't go overboard with it. Um, if nothing happens, then you can really throw a lot of it, but otherwise, just the equivalent of maybe two drops. Leave it for a while. And then cast it out. I'm just going to put the stopper though on top here, just for in case if those floats come loose on impact, like that. Let's see what happens. I had a question from one of my pro anglers this morning and it's also a question that's been frequently asked on um, our YouTube channel. So <laughs> the question was how do we determine how deep the water is that we are fishing? So there's, in carp fishing we have a, a marker float that we can exactly determine the depth but it's not allowed in bank angling. So in bank angling we've got different types of weights. So through my involvement with carp fishing and feeder fishing and bank angling um, I've learned that a P3 weight which is basically a 32 gram weight sinks against the stiff line at about one meter per second just the, the, the plain weight so when we cast out and you control the cast and, and you let that um, just before the lead hits the water you can basically hold on to the line and make sure that everything is stiff. It's like hitting, hitting a line clip. It's almost the same. As soon as that lead hits the water, you start counting one, two, three, four. You, you more or less count in seconds. And then sometimes you can feel the lead hitting the bottom, especially if you've got a hard bottom. Other, other times when the water is shallow, it's, it's very difficult to, de to determine that. And obviously with a P4 when you want to cast, or with a P3, you can only get up to a certain distance um, because of the, the, the lead is just too light. So I'm going to demonstrate there's, there's two, two ways. So I can count it and you can feel it. Or what you can do is as soon as, as the lead hits the water, you can bring the rod up to the side and just make sure rather pull back on the rod tip a bit make sure it's the the lead is sinking against a stiff line and the moment that lead hits the bottom you will see there's a relaxation in the line the the line will 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 give a bit so i'm going to try and capture this for you guys on camera bad not this one is for you let's see if we can do it i'll do the count you you'll hear me counting and i'll tell you when it's on the bottom as well i'm going to ask david to stand over there and i'll bring the rod tip towards him when i made the cast so this water is fairly deep i'm not going to make a long cast um david i'm just going to stand here so i'm going to make the cast control the cast so that's one two three four five six seven did you guys see the rotep release so 
seven, more or less seven meters deep there. So if you want to be safe, deduct one meter. Um, six meters, six meters for the volume is really deep. We are fishing um, dry fountain. We're basically in the river section and uh, the water is really, really deep. I'm going to cast it a bit further. That was around about 60 meters. So let's cast it a bit further. Do another one. Throw it a bit harder, around about 80 meters. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, six, five, or almost six. So the further you go, the shallower it gets. And what do we normally do? We want to see how far we can throw to get to the bigger fish. And if you do this in the beginning of your session, not like I did today, I just got here and threw them into the water. You can actually determine where the deep water is. In this instance, it looks like the deeper water is closer to us. We're sitting on, 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 the, on the rocky point. Let me throw one at around about 40 meters and see how deep it is there. Because if it's deeper there, it means that the river, the natural flow of the river, might be very close to the side, hence this rocky point. And um, I almost bet my bottom dollar it's going to be deeper at 40 meters. Let's do that. Let's see. The main thing is you have to control the cast. You have to um, drag the rod back and let it sink against a, a stiff line. That's about 50 meters. One, two, three, four. All right, that's interesting. Four. Four and 50. On 60, it was seven. So what, what it does, it goes down, it goes into the ditch, and it comes up on the other side. So you can actually draw a profile for yourself doing that. I hope it explains your, the, the answer to the question we've had a couple of times. Um, while I'm railing at this, this one back, um, remember to subscribe on our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell every time a new program drops. You're going to have awesome tips like this. Let's go catch another fish. Sure, no. Yeah, hello. Got a fish on. Yeah, it's been a really, really long day. Um, in contrast to our, our previous shoot at Moormans, this is like picnic weather, and that was like a, a proper cold front. And couldn't have asked for two days that was more different. But it shows you it's fishing, otherwise we would have called it catching. And everybody would have done it, or nobody would have done it. And this is what makes us come back. We're only human, we can only catch so many in a day, and if they don't bite, they don't bite. The air pressure is really high. We figured out something, that 100 meters seems to give a fish every, every 60 minutes. So. Um, it's just not nice sitting on your hands. Shona, will you net for me? This fish is just here in front of us. Shona, this time in the net, please. <laughs> Ooh, it's not a big one, Shona. You should get it in easy. Top hook. Top hook. Ah, we go. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> it was better, thanks. <laughs> ah, there we go. Nice little copy. Here we go. It's lucky to say that's your smallest fish for the day. So when we missed a couple of bites today, I don't know why it happens. Um, you you get your your policeman lays, and uh, you you just get a it's like a flick bite, like like the grasses. It flicks your policeman and it drops back. And if you pick it up, there's just nothing. We we each had a couple of bites like that, and it just just couldn't work. What do you estimate the weight? Around about a kilo. If you're lucky. Hey, when now? <laughs> <laughs> it's only because I'm not holding it. We're going to try and catch one more for the show. Shona, release that oak for us. Shona, how, new, how do you know in the Valdem when it's really cold? When the aniseed freezes. <laughs> yeah. I've been making this millibomb really soft. Um, I'm fishing these, these special weights with a, with a big bottom. I want you to feel something now. So this is so soft and yet oh, that's super soft. That's super soft. Eh? So yet we had a ball or two that, that came out. So surface temperature, 
I'm, I don't know what it is, but I can bet my bottom dollar at the bottom. It's even colder. colder. And I think that's one thing you guys should keep in mind when you're fishing the Valdem. Bring the gas braai, bring a braai when, when you come out. Arrive a bit later, throw the rods out. Um, don't expect to, to catch many, but you're going to catch quality in winter. Um, visit the deeper venues. Um, ask around where, where, where the fish is coming out. We've seen that in, in the tournament venues, you can fish up to 55 meters. That's how shallow you can come and you're still going to catch fish. Just cast it out, sit on your hands, um, make a brekkie, make a buri, um, whatever you do. Um, take, take the time, get out. Um, winter is such an awesome time. It's only cold um, in the mornings. I wanted to take my wader off 9 o'clock. But I was too lazy to do it today. So it, it's really not cold now. I haven't even got a jacket on. I don't know why you got a jacket on. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, Sean, have you got any winter tips that you can share with, with some of the people out there? Uh, look, I think just for, to be a bit more patient than you normally would. Um, I like fishing the, the much stronger smells. I mean, you know, the, the menthol muddy and the F250, that type of thing. I'll fish that okay. a little bit more. Um, instead of fishing it with something soft, I fish it with a garlic. Um, so you'll easily go two strong smells? Easily. Yeah, okay. Quite tough. Like, like you said about the Spitfire and the, and the Bass Plus. Yeah, Spitfire and the Bass Plus, yeah. All right. Um, that's one of my favorite winter combos. Um, <clears throat> and then they might not always want those bigger hook baits. Sometimes they want the smaller, finer presentations. Mm. Unfortunately, they didn't come through today. Um, but neither did the big ones, so. Yeah, I think it's just air pressure today, but it's 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 just difficult. It, it's just difficult. Um, you know, the front has passed through, and when the front comes in, your air pressure drops. It's always good for fishing when you got moving air pressure, but now the front's gone, and you got that stable weather. I call it picnic weather. It's not fishing weather, um, and and it's just difficult. Uh, my experience when that happens, rather go to venues that's a bit shallower. Um, the fish still have to eat. They haven't got a McDonald's or a KFC that they can drive to. They have to eat. If they don't eat, they die. It's as easy as that. So, and in the wall dam, especially with the dam being this low, I think it's on 55% now. Um, the fish are condensed. So they, they, they're on top of each other. Awesome place to fish in, in winter time. I'm going to bait this up and then uh, our day is coming to a, to a quick close. Do you want to catch a fish then so that we can just, go home? Just quickly. Man. Yeah, David, David's got a girlfriend to go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just by the way guys, if, if there's any anyone out there that wants to have vi videography work done, either a, a marriage that's happening, birthdays, school bashes, you name it, parties, no bachelor's parties. You're not taking David to a bachelor party. Um, Contact David, his contact details are on here. He makes my fish look big. So, and um, he, he's really professional in what he does. Feel free to contact him, get a quote from him, and he'll, he'll, he'll make you happy. He'll capture those moments for you on film. <sighs> Made a small change on my short rod. Um, that previous fish I caught, um, I changed the baits off camera and as you remember on my short rod on the first cast I had no does at the back. When it's difficult, don't do something you're uncomfortable with. Um, you, can, you can do whatever you want to, just make sure you're comfortable with it. I was uncomfortable with the does. I had a bite and I, I, it didn't commit and then I put back the doe. Got another bite, didn't commit, but my um, my confidence is in the dough. So I snipped the floats, made made it um, half a float, put the dough behind it, and I caught that fish. Um, same dip combo. It was the DKW with the anti seat, but it lays a long time. So I'm going to change it up. I don't think today is a, is a dip day. It it's a day where you just have to get it into the right area, sit on your hands, be patient, make that poiki, braai that buri, and uh, just just enjoy the time with your family, or practice a bit of casting on the side, not onto your spot. Um, Spitfire, 
and a bit of berry licious. Berry licious is basically our Waldam type strawberry, very nice dip that I never fish on camera. But whenever I'm in trouble, I take out berry licious and I do catch fish. Fish it with Spitfire, fish it, fish it with Julius, fish it with normal Devil's Track, fish it with Turbo Garlic. It always works. I'm going to get this out back out. Hook baits are the same. Bun Spice 101 float with a small dough and then that garlic oozing float with a small dough and of course my stopper dough. Let's get it out and see if we can get one more fish for this program before we head back home. Okay, let's get it out. 100 meters, line clip, dinks. On its head. Sean, no, Sean, no, Sean, no, you're rot, you're rot, you're rot. Sean, I'm going to catch his fish. <laughs> oh, <it's your> <laughs> yes. Come, 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 come. <laughs> what should you do with a, a big drag? That's when your bait runner drag is too stiff. <laughs> you're trying to bugger up the whole day now. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. Oh, that sounds good, Sean. Eh? Sounds better, eh? Yeah, yeah. They, just like Mormons in our previous show, they come in. And they want to come and fight here. And there's lots of rocks here. So um, it, it's, it's not easy. Um, and if you have two hooks on, you might get snagged. Um, just fight it high, Sean, and take your time. You got, the, you got until the sun sets. And then you got another 15 minutes to land it. I don't think I'll need that much time, though. No? Okay. This looks better. Let's see if I can get it in the net, Shona. First time. Yeah. Let's swim it into the net, she goes. That's how you do it. <laughs> like, uh, I'll come forward okay. with netting lessons. <laughs> what did you have on here, Shona? Uh, Bass Plus and Spitfire with two of your DKW floats and a, a long-ish white uh, dough behind it. Awesome, nice fish. We're going to grab a quick photo for an article. Um, we're having some signature series articles um, in a very weird magazine one of these days. The SA Bass. Top Goy articles in a bass magazine. The strange looking bass. <laughs> yeah, but we've got an opportunity to do it, so we're going to do it. Every time we come out to, to fish, we're going to do an article. Shona, I'm going to grab the camera. You hold on to your fish. Give me your rod. All right, Shona, release that fish. Pictures have been taken. See. Let's see if we can save this day by catching another one. Otherwise, oof, <laughs> your Anki's going to give it to us. <laughs> All right, super. Guys, another bit of technical stuff. Um, we've been discussing the hard ball versus the soft ball um, in, in winter time. And Sean, you, you like to fish a harder ball in, in winter. I like to fish a harder ball, though, um, purely because then I think there's less for the fish to feed on around the ball. And more chance than picking up your bait that's that's floating around or lying around. And you don't mind if if you catch a fish and that ball actually comes out. Right. It it makes a lot of sense to me. I'm 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 still on the soft ball side, but I, I do go to, to the harder bombs at, at stages. Um, especially when there's nothing happening, almost like today. So um, what I what I like then is and what Sean is saying is you're basically creating competition for your hook bait. If you cast into the same spot every time and nothing is happening. The one or two fish that are around there, they'll be finicky. But they've got lots to eat. The, the ball that, that dissolved, that's what they'll feed on. And maybe pick up your bait. We had a couple of, of bites that was just doing this with a policeman and it came back. And I believe they were pushing the, the bomb. And because we're fishing over the deeper water, they're pushing it back into the deep water. And I think um, it might be that that ball starts rolling down the slope and we think it's a backbite and when you pick it up there's no fish. So the hard ball scenario um, makes a lot of difference especially when there's muddies around as well. Don't give your muddies too much to, to, to feed on especially in winter. In, in summertime it's it's something totally different then we like to leave the feed behind. But um, harden it up sometimes in winter when you can't get to the fish with a soft ball harden it up. Rather throw it at the fish with with a hard ball where they are at and you, you'll definitely catch a couple of fish anything you want to add to that Jonah? just that i'm using all your uh, bass plus la. 
Listen, that's, those are actually my bottles. Sorry about that. So you, you believe in flooding it when nothing's happening? When nothing's happening, you bring, bring, bring the fish to the bowl and let them look for it. One, one day when I'm big, I'm going to throw that many mooties <laughs> on my melee bomb. <laughs> okay, Bass Plus, Spitfire, two DKW floats, those behind that. What's the stopper though doing here? That's what I'm learning from the, yeah. from the master. All right, let's get it out, Shauna. I'm going to take my dips and my floats, go back to my box. <laughs> Time you get branded stuff, but. <laughs> We lost. <laughs> that was a rough day. It was a rough day, but a much better day than sitting in an office. Most definitely. Um, a windless day on the wall, a windless winter day. And uh, it, it was a tough one. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things, Shauna. It's fishing, eh? It's fishing. We don't pre-feed. We rock up here like Jan Alleman does. We come and we fish. We left Rustenburg at just four o'clock this morning. Arrived here at eight. Long tough day, now we have to head back. Go make some mooties, go make some floats. You into the gym tomorrow morning. That's the plan, yeah. yeah. It's time. Respect brother, respect. <laughs> Guys, we're gonna see you next time. Hopefully we catch a couple of more fish. Hope you enjoy the tips from here and Shauna. Cheers, see you next time. Cheers guys.